Hello everyone, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Maddie. I run EdTech Classroom, the blog, podcast, and of course, YouTube channel. In today's video, I am going to be giving a beginner's tutorial to Google Forms. Google Forms is a wonderful tool. It's a part of the Google Suite and you can access it for free if you have a Google account. I am going to specifically show how as a teacher you can use Google Forms to create surveys or to create quizzes to share with your students. So we're going to look at a couple of different examples for how you might use Google Forms in your classroom. I'm also going to be, like I said, giving a beginner's tutorial to using this tool. I'm going to cover the majority of the key features of Google Forms. I'm not going to cover every single feature, but I'm definitely going to be covering the features that I find myself using the most as a teacher. So without further ado, let's get started. So I have gone to forms.google.com and it's taken me to a page that looks like this. Now you'll notice that I already have some Google Forms files here on the bottom half of my screen. That's because I use this tool kind of regularly as a teacher. Now if you have never used Google Forms before, you won't find anything at the bottom of your screen here. We're going to want to go ahead and create a new form to get started. So to do that, I'm going to go up to the top left hand corner and I'm going to click on the option that says blank. Now before I do that, you will notice that to the right of that blank form section, there are some other options, some templates that are already made for you. Google Forms has created some templates that they find that their users often use Google Forms for. So for example, there's a contact information form, there's an RSVP form, there's a party invite. So if you are looking for something and you want to save yourself a little bit of time, you might want to check out this template gallery and see what Google has already made. And you can edit this to uh, and adapt these forms to meet your specific needs. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and just click on this blank quiz option or this blank form option, excuse me, because we want to go ahead and create a blank form. So right now we are looking at a blank Google form file. You'll see that it says untitled form at the top of our screen. The first step of what I want to do is I want to go ahead and give this form a title. Now I'm going to be sharing three different types of Google Forms in today's video to give you some ideas as to how you might use this as a teacher. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and title this one 321 Exit Ticket because I'm going to be creating an exit ticket in Google Forms to share with students. So I'm going to go up here to where it says Untitled Form and I'll go ahead and just delete this text and give it a title. So I'm going to call this a 321 Exit Ticket. Next, I'm going to want to go ahead and add a form description. Now, a form description is essentially like a directions section that you could provide students with. So I might write something like, please respond to the following questions at the end of class. This will be your exit ticket for today or something like that. So now you'll see I have added the title and I've also provided some general, general directions for students to follow when they complete this form. Now, before we move on to adding any questions, I want to make sure that we give this file a title. Now we gave the form a title, but we also want to make sure that we're giving the file a title so it's easier for us to find in our Google Drive later. So we'll go up here to the top left hand corner and I'll click where it says Untitled Form, and you'll notice that when I clicked, it actually changed the file name for me. It changed it to that title that I already provided Google Forms with earlier. If you want to give your file a different name, go ahead. But for me, I want to just leave this saved as 321 Exit Ticket. So now, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and start adding questions for students to respond to. So first you'll see that there is already a question section that has been added for me in Google Forms. So I'll go ahead and click where it says untitled question. And now I am going to actually write a question for students to respond to. So I'm going to write three things you learned today. And basically the goal here for this is to have students provide three different things that they learned today. 
Now you'll notice when I typed in three things you learned today, this switched from being multiple choice to paragraph. Google Forms is pretty smart and can often predict the type of question that you are hoping to, um, to create, whether you want it to be multiple choice, short answer, paragraph, they can kind of predict based off of what you type in that question bar. But let's say that they predicted incorrectly and you don't want this to be a paragraph response. You can go ahead and click here where it says paragraph and there is now this drop down menu with tons of different choices. So I could create a short answer question. I want this one to be a paragraph just like Google, Google guessed correctly. You could also do multiple choice, check boxes, drop down, a file upload. I'm not going to show you file upload, but what's really cool about this is if you want students to actually upload a file from their device, let's say you have they have some sort of file or image or video saved on their on their computer or their iPad or their Chromebook that you want them to upload to Google Forms, they can do that with that file upload option. There's also linear scale, multiple choice grid, checkbox grid, date and time. So there's lots of choices here, but for this form specifically, we're just gonna be focusing on some of these more open-ended questions like short answer and paragraph. So I'll go ahead and just click on paragraph and leave that here. Now, the next thing that I wanna do for this question is I want to make sure that this question is required because for an exit ticket, I want students to respond to all three questions and I want those fields to be required so that they can't submit the form unless they filled them out since this is an exit ticket. Now, there are other instances in which you would not want these questions to be required. I'll show you that in just a little bit. But for this specific form that I'm working on, I want this to be required. So I'll go ahead and click on the option to turn this on so that this question is now required. Now, to add a new question, you can go ahead and click on this plus button right here to add a new question. There are some other choices as well. You can import questions from another Google form. You can add a title and description. I'll show you that one in a little bit. You can add an image. You can add a video. You can also add sections. But for now, I just want to go ahead and add a new question. So I'll click on this plus option right here to add a question. Now I have the ability to type in another question. So maybe I'll say two um, things you are curious about. And so now Google wasn't quite so smart with this one. They assumed that I wanted this to be multiple choice, but instead I wanna make this a paragraph. No big deal. I can go ahead and just click on this drop down menu and I'll switch this to be a paragraph response. Now a paragraph response is gonna give students a bigger amount of space to fill out than a short answer. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that students need to write a whole paragraph. I just like to give them an ample amount of space so that they can fill out this form to the best of their ability. So now again, I'm just going to go ahead and click on required because I want this section to be required. Now there previously, I just showed you the way that you can add a new question is by clicking this plus option. But if you want to duplicate a section, you can also do that. So let's say I want to duplicate this question or make a copy of it. The way I'll do that is I'll click on this option right here that says duplicate. When I click on it, now you'll see that I exactly duplicated the question from, from uh, the previous one. So now I might just change this to say one thing you are still wondering. Or maybe one, let's change this actually to one question you still have. And now I'll want to make this, it's still required. And again, I'll want to switch this back to paragraph. So you do have the ability to duplicate a section if you would like. There's kind of two different ways that you can add a new question. Typically, I gravitate towards just pressing this button that says add question. All right, now let's say that you made a mistake and you wanna delete one of your questions. You can do that by clicking on this trash can button to delete a section, but I don't wanna delete anything, so I'm just gonna leave it as is. So now you'll see we've created our three to one exit ticket. If you wanna take this one step further and customize the form, you do have the ability to do that. So let's say you wanna change the color, the background, you wanna add some images. The way you would do that is you would go up here to the top where it says customize theme, then you can click and now you'll want to add a header image. So I love adding a header image. This is optional, you don't have to, but I think it just kind of makes your form look um, a little bit more elevated. It's more fun to look at. So I'll click here where it says choose image 
And now you'll see that Google Forms has tons of different header images that you can choose from, which is really awesome. So they have a work and school category, they have illustrations, they have birthday, they have food and dining, they have party, they have just for kids. So there's lots and lots of different choices here. I'm going to go back to this work and school category and I'm going to choose this option here at the bottom. I like this one. Uh, it kind of looks like students are maybe working on an exit ticket, for example. Now you do have the ability to upload an image if you would like or choose some from photos from your Google Drive. I'm going to go ahead and just click on insert because I like this image choice here. Now you'll notice when I added the image, it actually changed the background color as well. So before it was that Google Forms purple shade, and now that I've added this image, they actually chose a color that they found within that image to upload instead. Now, if you don't like the brown color, you do have the ability to change that by going over here to the theme color. So let's say I want to make this orange instead, or maybe I want to make it this green color or this purple color. I think I'm going to choose this orange color. I really like this one. Now you can add a custom color by clicking on this choice here and searching for a color, just like how you would when you change a color in Google Slides or something like that. I'm going to go ahead and press cancel because I do like this orange color and I think it looks okay for the purpose of this video. Now lastly, you have the ability to change the font style. So I don't mind this font style. It's fine to me, but I know that lots of teachers really love their fonts. So if you do want to change your font, you can click here on this drop down menu and there are only a couple of choices for you to choose from. There's this decorative font, there's this more formal font, and then there's this playful font. I think I'm going to go ahead and stick with this playful font. It looks fun for my exit ticket activity. Now, the last thing that you would want to do to actually share this form with students, you would send it by pressing this send option. Once you press send, you can either share it to someone via email or what I like to do is I like to grab this link here and I like to copy the link and I like to share it with my students either through Google Classroom, maybe I want to share it with students through Seesaw, some other learning management system. If you want to share a direct link, you would do that. Google Classroom, if you are a Google Classroom user, they do have the option for you to actually attach a form when you create an assignment in Google Classroom. I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video, but you do have the ability to do that if you are a Google Classroom user. Now this is just one example of a form that I created in, in Google Forms. I'm going to show you a couple more examples, so I make sure to show you the majority of the key features that you might find yourself using. If you do like this exit ticket activity idea, feel free to recreate this form to try out with your students. Now I want to go ahead and I want to go back to the Google Forms homepage so I can create another quiz style form. And this time we are going to create a math quiz. So I am going to title this math quiz again. For the directions, I might just say, please fill out the quiz below. We're going to keep this short so that the video is not too long, but hopefully it'll give you a good idea as to how you can create a math quiz. So first for our very first question, I might want to have students write their name. So I'll type in name and you'll see this switched for me to short answer text. Now you don't actually have to require students to type in their name. You can make it so that that automatically is recorded for you, but I really like to have my students get in the habit of writing their name on everything. So I like to include an option that says name. I'll go ahead and make this a required field. So next for the first section of my math quiz, I want students to do some addition. So just like how when you create a quiz that students fill out on paper, I like to have certain sections. So for this addition section, I'm actually going to create a title for students to have so that it kind of is like the whole addition section is all in one place. So the way that I will do that is I will click here where it says add title and description. And I'm going to say addition. And I will say please complete the following multiplication questions. So now I have this section that I've created. I have this title here for me. It says addition, as well as some directions that are very specific to this, this section of addition in this quiz. So there's actually a setting that you need to turn on in order for this to be a quiz. So I'm going to go up to the top of my screen and I'm going to click where it says settings. And now you'll see the top choice says make this a quiz. 
I'm going to make sure to turn this on since I am creating a quiz. Now there are different ways that you can release grades. First, you can have grades be released immediately after each submission. So let's say that this quiz is going to be strictly multiple choice. If you wanted students to receive their grades immediately after they submitted, you could have this option turned on here. You'd have this checked so that students receive their grade as soon as they complete the quiz. Now, personally, I don't love to have students receive their results immediately. I like to actually manually review all the questions to notice certain trends. Maybe I'll notice that every student in the class missed one question. Hopefully not, but let's say something like that happens. I personally like to manually review all of the questions. So I typically turn this option on that says later after manual review. Um, this also makes it so that you have to uh, collect students' email addresses. So if your students don't have Google accounts, you're going to want to make sure that you don't choose this option, but we can cover that more in just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and just leave it on this immediately after submission option for the purpose of today's video. Now next you'll see that you can give students some more detailed information about uh, their results. So the first option says missed questions. Respondents can see which questions were answered incorrectly. I like to have that on. I like for students to know which questions they got wrong, but that's up to you. You can choose to turn that on or off. Next, we have correct answers. Respondents can see correct answers after grades are released. Again, this one is up to you. I like to turn this one on, but I know that there are also reasons as to why you might want this one to be off. And then next we have point values. Respondents can see total points and points received for each question. This one basically is just like how you have on a normal quiz where maybe you'll say, you know, each question is worth 10 points, for example. If you want this, if you want students to see the total points and then the total points they received, you would want this option to be on. Now, lastly, we have these global quiz defaults. What I like about this is that you can actually set a default question point value that assigns the same point value for every new question. Now, you can go in and add or change these point values. So let's say you want every question to be worth 10 points, except you want the short answer questions to be worth 20. You do have the ability to still set a default question point value, and then you can go ahead and change just a couple of questions that you want to be worth more or less points. I'm going to go ahead and do that because I think that this is a really handy feature. I'm going to make each question worth 10 points. So next we have responses. I'll click on this drop down menu and it just allows you to manage how responses are collected and protected. Now I usually like to turn this option on that collects email addresses. This makes it so that you actually don't have to have that section that asks for students to fill out their name. It's just kind of helpful if you're, if you're wanting to uh, figure out immediately which quiz is assigned to which student. I like to turn this on to also make sure that students are actually, that the name that they write on the quiz is actually their correct name. Um, so I like to turn this option on. However, if your students do not have Google accounts or they do not have email addresses, you are not go they're not going to be able to complete these forms. So that is something that you want to think about. I like to turn this option on. However, there are reasons that you would want to keep this off as well. Next, you also have send response responders a copy of their response. You might want to turn, you might want to keep this off. Um, I personally like to keep this off, but I know that there are reasons also why you would want people to receive a copy of their response. Um, next, we have allow response editing. So this one basically means that after somebody submits their form, they can actually go back in and make changes. For a quiz, I like to keep this off personally. Now next we have requires sign in. So this one is same kind of thing. Students have to have a Google account in order for you to do this, but you can limit the number of times that a student can complete a form to one response. Many teachers like to turn this on for quizzes. I'm going to leave it off just for the purposes of today's video, but that's another decision you will have to make. Next we have presentation. So this one is, these are just kind of like some nitpicky things that you can choose to change and manage how form and responses are presented to students. I'm going to keep this off. It's not super important to me, um, but these are some more advanced features that you can play around with if you are interested. 
Then next we have this defaults. We're gonna go ahead and skip over that one because I wanna make sure that we are able to really focus our energy for the rest of this video or this section of this video on creating the quiz. So we'll go back up to the top and we'll click on questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new question and I'm going to type in what the, I want the question to be. So I'm gonna say two plus two equals, and then I'm gonna make this multiple choice question. So I will say six, five, four, three. Now, because, that this, because I've made this form be a quiz, you'll see that there is an option here for an answer key. I'm gonna go ahead and click on answer key and I'm going to select the correct answer. I'm gonna choose four because that's the correct answer to this addition question. And again, this is where you'll see those default points that we set up in the settings here. It says 10 points. I do want this question to be worth 10 points. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that alone. And now I'm gonna go ahead and press the done button. So now you'll see that this four is checked here. So that means that because this is a quiz, students will receive 10 points if they, they select the correct answer, which is four. We're gonna add one more addition question and then I'm gonna show you how to create a new section. So I'm gonna add a question again and I'm going to say two plus three equals. And I'm gonna give the same answer choices, six, five, four, three. Now for this one, again, you'll wanna add an answer key. I'll click on it. I'm gonna choose five because that's the correct answer and then I'll click done. So I've made this really nice and simple. Now you'll see that our multiple choice, our addition section, excuse me, has two questions that we've added. Now let's say we wanna move on to a new section. I can add a new section in two different ways. If you wanted this quiz to be really long, sort of like stream of consciousness style, you could go ahead and add another title and description, just like we did with this addition section. Or if you wanted this to be kind of like multiple different pages, you could actually add a new section. So I was calling this the addition section, but really what I created was an addition title and then two questions to go underneath that title. If you wanted to create essentially like a new page within the Google form, the way you would do that is you would click on this add section option. So I'm gonna do that so that you can see what this looks like. So now you'll see it says section two of two. So now I'm gonna type, title this one multiplication. I'm not gonna add any, add any directions here, but you do have the ability to do that. Now I'll go ahead and add another question. I'm going to, uh, for this question, I'm gonna do another multiple choice one. I'll say 10 times three equals. Option one, I'll say 30. Option two, I'll say 33. Option three, I will say, uh, maybe I'll say 10, and then I'll say 13 for option four. Now I'll click on answer key. And I'm going to select 30 because that's the correct answer and then I'll click done again. So now I want to show you guys what this quiz actually looks like from the student perspective. Um, I'm not going to customize this one since I showed you how to do that with the exit ticket activity but just like with um, a regular survey that you provide students with you do have the ability to customize a quiz as well. So to preview what this would look like for students I'm going to click on this preview button and this is what the student perspective looks like. So you'll see that first up at the top, it says math quiz. Now I am logged into my Google account. It says my edtechclassroom at gmail.com. That's my email if you guys want to reach out to me and ask any questions. So the first thing I want to do is I want to type in my name. So my name is Maddie. So I'll type in Maddie. Now next it says addition. Please complete the following multiplication. Oops please complete the following addition question. So I just noticed a mistake with my form. Um, I'll go ahead and fix that in just a little bit. But let's say I know that two plus two equals four, so I'll choose that option. Next we have two plus three. Let's say I accidentally make a mistake and I say that this one is six. Now I can go ahead and go to the next section. So that's what I was talking about, the difference between these sections. If I wanna go to a completely new page, I'll go ahead and press next. And now you'll see it takes me to the multiplication section. So 10 times three equals 30. And now I'm gonna press submit. And my response has been recorded. So now as the teacher, that was just the student view. I'll go back and take a look at the teacher view so you can see what a submitted quiz looks like. I'll go back to my other Google form. And now you'll notice at the top here, there's this responses section. That shows me that one student has responded to my quiz. So that was me testing it out. I'll click on responses 
and there's kind of like some directions here that you can follow if you want to take a tour of Google Forms, but I'm going to walk you guys through this manually. So there's three different choices. We have summary, we have question, and we have individual. Um, so a summary basically tells you the summary of all of the responses. Now, because I only have one student who filled out this form, the summary is just going to show one student result. Um, but if you had a class of 20 kids, for example, who all filled out this form, this would give you some really key insights. It would tell you the average, the median, the range, the total points distribution. It would also tell you frequently missed questions and here's some information about um, sort of what the scale of how, uh, what percentage of students chose which response and got it correctly. Now if you want to see individual breakdowns by questions, you could click here on the option that says question. So now you'll see that we have uh, my name here, this one, because this was a short answer response. It said it's been ungraded. Now I can go through and I can view all of the results for every other question. So for this one, you'll see we can see the individual question results here. Now you can also see individual student results under this individual tab. So if I click on individual, now you'll see Maddie's complete, completed quiz here. So I can scroll and I can see the individual responses per student. Personally, when I am grading quizzes, I find myself focusing mostly on this individual tab. However, it is helpful to have this summary and question tab to get kind of like an overall glance at how all of the students are doing in your class as a whole group or as a whole unit. Um, next, additionally, you can um, actually export these results to Google Sheets if you are a Google Sheets user and enjoy viewing uh, quiz results in a spreadsheet. Personally, I actually really like that. It makes it easier for me to sift through data. So if you click on this option right here, it will actually create a spreadsheet for you. So let's click on it and see what happens. I'm going to create a new spreadsheet. And you'll see that at the top, it says the timestamp. So it tells me the time that each student submitted the response. It tells you the score they received. It tells you their name and then their responses that they provided. So this is really neat as each student fills out the quiz. Um, their information will be added. So that's something that's really neat. I'll show you just really quickly what that would look like. We'll preview this form again. I'm going to say Ed Tech. I'm going to fill out the quiz just very quickly for you guys. I'll press submit. And now if we go back to this form, you'll see that this has been updated in real time. So that's something that's really cool about Google Sheets and Google Forms is that they, they sync really nicely with each other and these results can pop up in real time for you as the teacher. So it's kind of a great way for you to see the results as they come in. So now that we've completed this form, we're going to go back to our Google Forms page here. We're going to go back to home and I'm going to show you the very last type of um, question type that you might, might provide your students with. I've actually gone ahead and created a form for you that I just want to show you quickly. This is an example of a self-evaluation survey or form that you might share with students. So here, I just wanted to show you this just to give you kind of a glimpse as to what some of these other question types look like. So this is a self-evaluation form that I created. The first question is, what is your name? It is a short answer text response. Then next we have a select all that apply to you. That is gonna be that checkboxes response that I was talking about earlier. So there are all of these different checks that students can, um, can select when they fill out the form. And then the last option here is gonna be that linear scale. So you'll see that I wanted this to be a one through five scale. So I clicked on this, I chose one as the bottom and five as the maximum. I wanted one to be never and five to be always. So now you'll see when we click off to the side, it says, I ask for help when I do not understand. Never would be one and always would be five. So I just wanted to show you this form example here so you could uh, kind of visualize what some of these other question response types look like in Google Forms. So those are the three main examples that I wanted to share in today's video. I tried to keep this really relevant and applicable to teachers. There are lots of other features that you can use to try out Google Forms with your students, but these are the three ways that I find myself using the most as a teacher. Thank you so much for watching today's Google Forms tutorial all about how to use this wonderful tool in your classroom. If you liked this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up, 
Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. I post weekly tech tutorials for teachers and I'll see you back here soon. Bye friends.